trading their 2020 first round pick might not be the best option for the Golden State Warriors. Here are 7 players they can target without using their pick. So without further ado, let's roll the intro. Hi. Yo, what's up guys, Jason here back with another video. If it's your first time watching, I do basketball video every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell, and you'll be the first one in the future to see more awesome videos just like this. For years to come, the Golden Steel Warriors played it safe and refused to make any huge trades on their roster. Then, with injury and free agency decisions led to their potential downfall in 2019, the franchise began making moves for survival. With no other option, the Warriors traded Kevin Durant to the Brooklyn Nets for D'Angelo Russell. In order to make things work financially, Andre Godala was also shifted to Memphis. By the trade deadline, Russell was flipped for Andrew Wiggins and a future first round pick. This frenzy of deals was necessary for the Warriors to keep themselves afloat. As a result of the Andre Godala trade, the Warriors will have a $17 million trade exception to work with during the offseason. While the upcoming lottery pick is an obvious asset to be included in potential deals, there are also some serious problems in including the pick. The Warriors could end up with the top pick in the draft. If this is the case, they will aim for someone big in exchange for the pick. However, most stars are making more than $17 million a year and the Warriors don't have any players outside of their core that they can offer to match salary. Because of this, the Warriors may have to look for trades that don't involve their first round pick. With that being said, let's talk about 7 players of lower value that the Warriors can target. Now for number 1 we have Rodney Magruder, a pretty unfamiliar name. The LA Clippers have been making the most of Rodney Magruder's versatility this season. Though an injury held him out of brief stretches, Magruder played a big role off the bench for the Clippers and even filled in for Kawhi Leonard during load management games. Magruder is dedicated to doing whatever the team needs. He brings energy and defense to every match, constantly hustling for extra possessions. In his 15 minutes playing time per game, he averaged 3.2 points and 2.6 rebounds. He isn't going to have a massive impact on the stat sheet, but he will affect the game in a positive way. He's a gritty defender and does what it takes to boost his teammates. Magruder will be a viable option for the Warriors second unit. Shooting is Magruder's biggest concern. He shoots below 30% for his career and hasn't shown any signs of improvement. Still, his tenacity on defense is something the Warriors would appreciate. And now for number 2, we have Cody Ziller. The Golden State for number 3, it will be a familiar name, it's going to be Patrick McCall. A familiar face for fans of the Golden State Warriors, McCall has the chance to right his wrong and rejoin the franchise. It seems like decades since McCall forced his way out of Golden State after believing he was worth more than his contract. This was a bold negotiation from such a young player on a championship caliber team and it's no surprise the Warriors let him walk rather than entertain his attempt at a power move. Since then, McCall has played for two different teams. He enjoyed a brief three game stint in Cleveland before finding a better home in Toronto. He is playing a career high 24.5 minutes per game for the Raptors and has shown a bit of promise. McCall is only 24 and has the potential as a shooter. His length at the guard position makes him a positive defender and he is also an adequate playmaker. Returning to the Warriors and being one of the main options off the bench could be a great redemption story for Patrick McCall. In for number 4 we have Tomas Sacharansky. He is not a gifted athlete. He is not a lethal shooter. He will not overwhelm you with his size or speed. but. He's a trustworthy with the ball in his hands, and Sacharewski will do his job as a floor general. He filled in as a primary ball handler for the Chicago Bulls last season and excelled. He averaged 9.9 .9 points and 5.4 assists per game while shooting a moderate 43.3% from the floor. He is a lockdown defender, but he managed to rack up 1.2 steals per game last year. Sacharewski is a quality decision maker and will thrive in a reduced role off the bench. The Warriors are in need of a backup guard for Steph Curry. This is the perfect chance for Zacharewski to step in and have an impact on a competitive team. In now for number 5, we have El Camino. 
The Golden Sea Warriors know they need to add more wing players to this roster. This is their weakest position in terms of depth and Andrew Wiggins stands alone as their only reliable option. Aminu is a no-brainer for the Warriors. He has been in the league for 10 years and can offer the veteran presence the Warriors are looking for. Not only that, he is capable of playing multiple positions and can defend the parameter at a solid rate. Aminu is fresh off a torn injury that could be a reason for concern. Most of his game is built off of athleticism but he can still make an impact with his size and strength. Before the injury, Aminu was averaging 4.8 points and 4.3 rebounds per game. His role in Golden State will be minimal. He will likely play most of his minutes at the 3 behind Andrew Wiggins, but he's also capable of playing the small ball lineups as a power forward. This addition, versatility, and depth is something the Warriors could benefit from next season. And for number 6, we have James Johnson. Well, the rest of the players on this list will all play small roles. James Johnson is the first who will actually have a truly noticeable impact. Johnson is an NBA tough guy. Basically, this means he is one of the league's best enforcer and plays with an aggressive mentality. This is something the Warriors need as most of the league has lost their fear for the Warriors. Johnson won't tolerate any disrespect. On top of this, he is a skilled player as well. Johnson is a high jumper and has a muscular build. In 14 games with the Minnesota Timberwolves last season, Johnson averaged 12 points, 4.7 rebounds, and 3.8 assists per game. He can do just about everything on the floor. He can knock down 3-pointers consistently, rebound the ball, play defense, and create plays for others. He is a natural fit for the Golden State Warriors. And last but not least, we have Rudy Gay. If Rudiger wants the chance to win a championship before he retires, joining the Golden State Warriors is his best option. Gay has played 14 seasons in the NBA and has always been a killer on offense. He can score on all levels and is smooth with the ball in his hand. His 6 6'8 frame and lanky arm make him a threat at all times. The last few years have been Gay take on a smaller role in San Antonio, as his shot attempts have slowly decreased, his efficiency has actually improved. It's very likely Gay will be a good spark plug off the bench for Golden State. With the Spurs, he has averaged 11.8 points, 5.8 rebounds, and 1.9 assists per game across the last three seasons. Rudy Gay will fill in as a replacement for Andre Iguodala. While Iguodala specialized in defense, Gay will be a force on offense. He is the best possible player the Warriors could require without giving up their first round pick and an obvious target for the franchise. So guys, this wraps up the video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a subscribe and follow me on social media with all the links in the description down below. And once again, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you guys in the next episode. Peace.